Let's get this straight. This is Mike Craven. Mike Craven, Congress for the 3rd Congressional District. Hi, this is Frank Simon. The rest of the news, we've got a really busy program today. And we want to begin with one of the candidates who's running for Congress in the 3rd Congressional District, which is Yarmouth's District. And his name is Mike Craven. And my brothers and sisters, first off, I want to take this opportunity to spend one second in remembrance of the children down in Santa Fe, Texas. As we all know, at least eight to ten were shot to death. Yes, again, today, today in Santa Fe, Texas. So I want to take at least a split second to remember them and ask God to be with their parents as they mourn their loss on this Pentecost Sunday weekend. Now, as Dr. Frank Simon said, my name is Mike Craven. I grew up in J-Town. So suburb of Louisville, Kentucky. I've been here my whole life. Worked at Ford Motor Company for 30 years. Hired in 77, retired in 07. I've been working the streets for more than 10 years. I've seen it all. Druggies and everything. I told Dr. Frank said before, when you have a moral and mental breakdown of society, you have a moral and mental breakdown of the family. When you have a moral and mental breakdown of the family, you have a moral and mental breakdown of the people. That's when you get anarchy, chaos, and craziness. That's what we have right now. People want to make something of themselves. So our young men are going into these schools and places and shooting them up thinking that they're going to get something out of it. And all they're going to get is death and darkness. Dr. Frank Simon and me have just, just spoke. When we took the prayer out of the schools in 1962, that's when it went downhill. Yeah. 1973 was a nail in the, in the coffin, January 22nd. We need to get back to prayer. We need to get back to supporting the American family. When you break up the family, Satan's not stupid. He's very powerful, very smart. Yeah. He knew how to destroy this country, destroy it with inside itself. And we're doing it. We're fighting each other. Hate, pure hate. This has got to stop. It has to do with the power of prayer. The most powerful weapon that we have in not only this country, but the whole world, is the power of prayer. Right, doctor? That's right. Thank That's you, right. doctor. We've got to get back to the power of prayer. That's what me and Dr. Frank Simon, Ronald La Pal La Palazio, and all of us have grew up with. And That's we're going right. to get back to it. Right. Okay. Well, I think we better call it quits there. We appreciate you running for Congress against Yarmouth. Let's see if we can switch around here and have Rhonda say a word. Hello, Dr. Simon. No, Hello, right. Rhonda Palazzo. You're running against Yarmouth, too. Yes, I am. I'm running in the primary on Tuesday. Okay. Would you like to say a word of what you think is important in this election? Yes, I think this election is crucial. Because we have to get Republican elected, yeah. go back to Congress so that we can confirm the judges. There is 165, I think, a backlog of judges that yeah. have not been confirmed yet. We'll probably have a couple more Supreme Court justices that vacancies where we'll need to, to confirm Trump's picks. So we really need to put Republicans in office and to put strong constitutional conservative Republicans, ones that will not back down in Congress, especially the Second Amendment is under great attack right now. And that's going to be important to preserve all of our constitutional rights. And there's one other thing I would love to motivate and reactivate the people of God, the church. The church has remained silent for too long. Just because of the Johnson Amendment and the fear of losing a 501c3, I think people that are God-fearing people need to get involved back in the political process. Because if we, a moral people, are not involved, who do we leave to take over the country? Exactly. And God told us in his word, we are to steward the land. That is our Christian, our Jewish are God-given responsibility to steward the land, and I hope to motivate a lot more people, faith-based okay. people. God bless you, Rhonda. Thank you. Now we've got a third guest. We're going to be really busy today. This is Jim Waters. He has got something to say. Jim, people are talking about the State Department of Education taking over the Jefferson County Schools. Now, why do they say things like that? 28 years ago, when Kentucky passed the Kentucky Education Reform Act, the funding equity issue 
there was a big concern about poor school districts that didn't have wealthy property tax values. And most of the education funding was based on the property tax revenues. So that was one part of that. And they fixed that, largely fixed that. Today, we have pretty equitable funding when it comes to state dollars and when it comes to education dollars. But the other important part of CARA that got left behind was that the first page of that law said that we believe every child can learn at the highest level. And that's why one of the major reasons we're advocating for a state takeover of Jefferson County Public Schools is, as a matter of fact, since even CARA was passed and since we started getting national test scores back in the 1990s, this school district has never performed well with its low-income minority students. Something else has to be done. Now, if we had a situation where people were being denied a seat at the lunch counter because of the color of their skin, why we wouldn't hesitate to allow the federal government to come in and yeah. correct that situation, which we, matter of fact, we did back in during the civil rights era, if you will, back in the 1960s. Well, the achievement gap between black and white students is the civil rights issue of our day. And the problem is we've got kids coming along that come from generations of poverty, of lack of opportunity, lack of education, and they're in our public schools. We have a moral responsibility to address this issue. And we think at the Bluegrass Institute that, that we think that, for one thing, the federal laws are being broken in terms of lots of information we're not being given, and also that uh, civil rights are being violated by the fact that our low-income minority children are disproportionately in the priority schools in Jefferson County. They're in the low-performing schools. So I've gotten a lot of pushback about this from some quarters. Normally, the Bluegrass Institute would be for local control. But the problem is we don't really have local control right now. We have system control. We have bureaucratic control. We have union control. But we don't really have local control of the school districts. We have to have a serious look at this by the state. And I'm confident with the board that's now in place, that Governor Bevan has put in place, and with the new interim commissioner, Dr. Wayne Lewis, who we've worked with on charter school issues a lot in the past and other issues, we have the opportunity now to address this problem. We've got a school district here where less than one in five black students in the Jefferson County School District tested proficient on any NAEP test. The NAEP is the National Report Card, the National Assessment for Educational Progress. And that's the way that we know how the minority groups and different groups are performing, the different demographic groups, is because of that federal test. And the results of that are not good for Jefferson County. I mean, barely more than one in three white eighth graders even in Jefferson County are testing proficient in math. Less than one in 10, less than one in 10, eighth grade black students is proficient in math in the Jefferson County Public Schools and in Kentucky as a whole. This now, is a serious why issue. Why do you think it's causing that? Do you have any ideas? Like I said, one of the reasons that I just touched on, but it doesn't explain it all, but it explains some of it, is that low-income minority kids are disproportionately placed in failing schools. And so we have a lot of schools in Jefferson County, the majority of the priority schools in Kentucky are in Jefferson County. Now, Jefferson County is the 10th largest school district in America. And so about 37% of the student population in Jefferson County are minorities. Now, so, why are the minorities sent to this? Or why do they end up in these poor schools? One of the reasons why is because we don't give parents the opportunity to choose the, which school their children attend. And a lot of minority parents, as we know from other large school districts around the country, would choose to have a charter school or a private education. They don't get that choice here right so now. So if they had a choice, they would send them to a good school rather than to a That's bad right. school. That's right. Now, I think another issue here are expectations. For example, we were surprised at the Bluegrass Institute to find that the schools with the biggest achievement gaps in Jefferson County are not in the West End of Louisville. They're in the East End. And so what we have going on here are all these kids who are being bussed from uh, downtown, away from their neighborhoods, and they're being bused to schools east of I-65. The white kids in those schools are doing pretty well, even improving in some cases, but the black kids that are being bused out to the east end of town are not doing well. And of course, we can't really get in there. Uh, there's a lot of privacy issues and there's a lot of things, but we've got a question 
what the expectations are. Those low-income minority kids are being bused to the East End. I thought the idea of that was to provide them with a better education. But we have large gaps that are getting larger in this district. For example, 52% of white fourth graders in Jefferson County were proficient in math last year, 52%. Guess what the percentage of blacks was that reached proficiency in fourth grade math? 14%. There's a 38-point gap in this district between white and black students in fourth grade math proficiency. 84% of our fourth grade black students, 85% of our eighth grade blacks failed to read at proficient levels last year in reading. 91% of black eighth grade students in this school district failed to reach proficiency in math. 91% last year. Really? So that's the less than one in 10%, less than one in 10 that were proficient in math. Why does that matter? If that matters even more now than it ever has. The jobs of the future, we know, are going to be in the STEM areas, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, STEM. And all of those require a strong math education. And so the kids that are not prepared for those opportunities are going to be left behind. They're not only going to be competing in this 21st century as we move further into this century, they're not only going to be competing against uh, students, graduates from Indiana or Tennessee or Ohio or Michigan. They're going to be competing against kids from Hong Kong, from South Korea, uh, India, from China, who go to school six days a week, 12 days, 12 hours a day, and don't have these long summer breaks where they forget everything they learned in the previous year. And many of these countries have school choice. This is just accepted in many of these countries. America has actually fallen far behind when it comes to giving parents choices. So we believe that with the state takeover of Jefferson County, that there will actually be more charter school opportunities that will be created because Dr. Wayne Lewis, who's the interim commissioner, taught in the New Orleans school district, which is 80% charter schools. And he taught special needs students, by the way. He's, He's a great guy. He's got a great resume. But he understands the importance of giving parents of low-income minority kids a choice. And we think that with the support of the board, which he will have, now that Governor Bevan finally has the board that he wants, and of course Governor Bevan's been great on this and pushing for school choice. So we think that we're going we're gonna to really advocate and push hard for them to find the dollars to create some charter schools here in Jefferson County, especially targeted at low-income minority kids. And we think that will be a big deal. One of the other things I wanted to say about the gaps, they're getting wider. I want to make sure we say this. We're not moving in the right direction. And that's another reason why something has to change. For example, in fourth grade math in 2011, the gap between white and black students in Jefferson County was 28 points. That's bad enough. That grew to 38 points last year from 28 to 38. But even worse, in reading, there was a 23-point gap between white and black students just two years ago in 2015 because we have a lag in the test results. So in 2015, the gap was 23 points in reading between white and black fourth graders. In last year, it was 35 points. It, it grew by 12 points. Eighth grade gaps, as we said, are large, and they have not made any improvement in the last decade, going back to 2009. Well, now, if Bluegrass Institute didn't research all of this, I guess we'd never know. Is that right? Yeah, for a long time, there was a perception, I think, in the minority, that the schools were doing pretty well. We had a lot of kids that weren't graduating, and kids who don't graduate end up somewhere, either on the street corner, in prison, or in the morgue. And we started working with a group of black pastors here. And that's kind of really where that coalition started back with Reverend Lewis Colvin, who I was meeting with him in his office one day. The Bluegrass Institute did a study on per pupil spending for each school in Kentucky versus test scores. He hit the roof. He called a press conference just a couple of days after that had me sitting there right with him in downtown in the West End of Louisville and said, this is going to change. And thanks to the late Reverend Coleman, who passed away. But thanks to him, this effort got started. And today, we are providing the Kentucky Pastors in Action Coalition, the KPAC group, which is growing all the time with more pastors, black, white, Hispanic, coming in. And we're giving them the data that they need to make their case. Let's face it, a white guy like myself can walk into school board office. They don't have to talk to me. But they're not going to tell our black pastor friends, who are seeing the failure every day in their communities, in their churches, in their schools, 
Nobody had better say no to them. We have witnessed educational inequality in the Jefferson County Public Schools for too long. We have witnessed decades of abuse and failing policies affecting our children. That's why KPAC supports the state takeover of JCPS. These things are happening right in our community. Here are the statistics. Only one out of five black children in JCPS in the fourth grade are proficient in math. Fewer than one in 10 black JCPS eighth graders are proficient in math. The achievement gap between white and black students has widened since 2009. That's why KPAC supports a state takeover of JCPS. Our veteran teachers should have the opportunity to go into these schools and change these statistics with real financial incentive pay. Right now, the union contract won't allow it. Instead, they offer empty gestures like gym memberships. Folks, that just won't cut it. That's why KPAC supports the takeover of Judson County Public Schools. Now is the time for change. People, it is time to speak up. And they have taken all this information. We've given them all this information. And they have taken it and used it effectively. That opens the door to collect the data so that you can get these statistics you're telling us about. One of the problems we have, though, is it's interesting after our bang for the buck report came out that I mentioned, where we showed revenue for each school, not just the district, every school compared to test scores. Guess what we found on that? The highest spending schools in many cases were the lowest performing schools. Really? So Jefferson County right now spends about $15,000 per pupil. So I don't want to hear excuses about money here. This is yeah. not about money. This is about expectation of our minority students. This is about good schools for those kids. This is about parental choice. This is about accountability. And this is about a lot of wasteful spending. And this is about the impact, the negative consequences of the union contract on the education of our kids in Jefferson County. Jefferson County has a collective bargaining agreement. The Jefferson County Teachers Association, the union, and the school district. Some research has been done in the past on the problems that that contract causes for leaders of the school district who really do want to reform the school system. For example, Dr. Polio, who has a vision for improving this district, but his hands are tied by a collective bargaining agreement, which does not allow him, for example, to assign the best teachers to the schools where they're most needed, to the I failing see. schools. Yeah. There was some actual research done on this by the Office of Education Accountability, and a few years ago, they actually talked quite a bit about this issue. For example, they said that in Jefferson County, there are great concerns about the distribution of high-quality teachers. I'm quoting now. Quote, Lower performing schools have more inexperienced teachers and higher turnover rates than higher performing schools. In the six Jefferson County schools identified as persistently low performing in April 2010, when this study was done, quote, a large percentage of teachers being hired, are you ready for this, were teacher interns with less than one year of experience. So the poor schools were getting inexperienced teachers. Inexperienced teachers. And we know from research on what's happening in our colleges and universities that the worst students academically, the lowest performing students, are those who are in the education college, those who are going to teach. So we have a double whammy there in terms Wait, of the students in education schools at university, education at teacher's college. Right, in the, in the education colleges within the university are the, generally the lowest performing academically. They are the academic... Really? They are the lowest performing academically. So we have them coming out of these education schools where they have struggled academically. And we're putting them in these really difficult, tough situations where we need to have experienced teachers. One thing you said sounded like the busing was making the situation worse. Well, we know that low-income black students in Jefferson County who are bused to the East End, and, yeah. the, and the idea was to give them a better education. They're not getting a better education. In fact, they're not doing as well as the kids back in their neighborhood that go to schools in their neighborhood. So this is not working, okay? 
but because of this progressive feel good social engineering yeah. Yeah. by the district, this is a problem. I want to mention that the teachers union spends lots of money to protect school board members who will tow the union line. In the last election, the Jefferson County Teachers Association spent over $300,000 on school board races. 291000 of that was spent to protect Chris Brady's position on the school board. Another group spent 270000 to defeat him, and they couldn't do it. There was $560,000 spent on one school board race in the last election. In yeah, the last school I know board the teachers union kind of control those elections. Yes, and another problem is that because they control that, that the way our schools are governed is also got to be changed. And if you go to our website at bits.org, and you type in school-based decision-making council, you can read a lot about this. We did a, an evaluation of the audits that were done, the management audits, of the lowest-performing schools in the state yeah. and in Jefferson County. The school-based decision-making councils, which are controlled by the teachers, also controlled by the teachers' unions, they hire their own bosses, they hire the principals, they have control of all of the major decisions involving right. money, curriculum, personnel. And we want that to change. We want the school-based decision-making councils to be relegated to an advisory role and uh -huh. put the authority back in the hands of yeah. the school board and the, the superintendent and the parents. And this is a huge problem because every school has this. Well, now, problem. do you think the only solution is for the Kentucky Board of Education to take over Jefferson County Schools? What we want to see is an intervention there that has Dr. Polio, first of all, freed up from the board and the union contract to implement the vision that he has. He has a vision. We want them to work with him, but we do want him to be accountable for a period of time directly to the Dr. Lewis and the State Board of Education so that we can see the progress. And that way also the school board, I know they're elected, and this is tough because normally we would not be advocating for this. But I've given you several reasons yeah. today why that yeah. needs to change. This this is one of the reasons. By the way, the Fordham Foundation on the union contract here did some also said about this contract. They gave it a D minus. They graded the top 50, the largest 50 school districts, the collective bargaining agreements. They gave them a grade. They gave us a D overall on this contract in terms of its impact. It means it's very negatively impacting education. It gave them a D minus on personnel policies and a D minus for work rules. And they said that none of the districts they looked at really had a high degree of flexibility. So in other words, the Jefferson County contract was the worst of the worst. It has a negative impact on kids and on the education system. And we're calling for them not to enact a new contract with the union until the decision is made about state intervention. It seems that from what you've said, that the Kentucky Board of Education should take over Jefferson County School. Is there anything that our listeners can have an influence right. on that? It's really important that the school board members here hear from your listeners about what they've heard today about these numbers. And we're going to post this on our website, bibbits.org. And we have a talking point sheet you can print out. It's very easy to read. We had it designed for ease. We gave it to the pastor's group. They're already using it. They used it at the board meeting last week. But the board members are hearing from the teachers. They're hearing from labor bosses. They're hearing from all those folks. They need to hear from people who are saying, we need the choice taxpayers. in our district. And it's not a money issue. Listen, the budget for Jefferson County this year, $1.56 billion. And I don't care if this yeah. funding from the state was down. That doesn't matter. They have a total amount to spend. Yeah. enough to spend. And by the way, what needs to happen, great teachers need to be paid more to go into these failing districts. And that's what the union opposes. And also, I want to say about this election coming up, this primary election, I am very disappointed in this legislature. The governor of this state who was elected on a platform of cutting wasteful spending and taxes and getting our state into a business-friendly environment, they overrode the vetoes of 70 wasteful spending programs and of tax increases. This Republican legislature raised taxes by nearly a half billion dollars, and they picked and cho chose who they were going to raise it on. 
they're going to raise it on professionals, then it should be on lawyers, accountants, everybody. But mm -hmm. they didn't do that. So I'm really disappointed. Another One other quick thing. The State Board of Education is doing their own evaluation of this contract, the impact of the union contract, and we're looking forward to them coming out with that. We hope they won't hold back on that. Okay, Jim, this is our voter guide for every race that's coming up on the 22nd of May, Tuesday the 22nd, and we'll be glad to send this to everybody that wants one. And we'll send you enough for everyone in your church or in your neighborhood. And the number to call is 895-5025. 895-5025. Well, we're about out of time. We really appreciate you. Well, is there anything else you want to say? And I want to encourage people to vote in this primary. And I want to thank you for having me on today. Thanks for having doing such a great job of informing people about what's going on in the well, candidates. This is really well, important, so. isn't it? Again, the, this is important for our kids. Our education system is about our kids, not about the adults. It's about our students. So that's where our focus is. Thanks for having us. Okay, Jim Waters, thank you very much, and tune in again next week. Hi, I'm Dr. Frank Simon. I'm an allergist and family doctor, board certified in both allergy and internal medicine. I specialize in allergy, headaches, sinus, hives, cough, asthma, hypertension, and diabetes. We're located at 1404 Browns Lane near Norton Suburban Hospital. Our phone number is 895-5088. We can see you tomorrow. I, Luke, send a message to all those that follow our Lord Jesus Christ. There is a terrible evil in the world. Darkness is spreading. <laughs> I know you are suffering persecution. Faith is being tested. I know you question the way, but I've come to Rome to find Paul, to write his story, to bring hope, to bring light into this present darkness, and to remind us all how God changed a hateful man who will change the history of the world. Luke, am I dreaming? I'm here. Rome is stained with the blood of her brothers and sisters. No! This is what trusting God gets you. People are desperate. We're the only light left in the city. I cannot fix their faith. You can inspire their faith. You risked people looking to me before Christ. The day I heard you preach, my God, I saw Christ in you. There are men, women, children that will never meet you. There must be a handwritten account of your acts. What do you really know about these Christians? I am concerned with these documents. We've got to get these out of Rome. Do you think that we are plotting an escape? Write another word and I send you to whatever god you want. Luke! The government to overthrow Rome. To what end? Justice! They want revenge. No! Why not? Love is the only way. comes, you will have the strength to do what is right. We let people die today. This world doesn't know a thing about love. Where sin abounds, grace abounds more.